Hello, and thank you for joining us for this week's message. This message is called, He Won't Give Up On You. We're looking at 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 to 15. Now, before I get into it, I want to just give a little bit of background. We've been doing Old Testament stories and themes found in the Old Testament last week. We looked at the house of David, and we talked a little bit about the sins that King Solomon committed. And because he committed those sins, one of the consequences was that the kingdom was split between the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. Now, during these years, the kings really didn't follow after the Lord, especially in the northern kingdom. And God raised up prophets to speak to the kings and to speak to the people to help them actually follow after God. And probably one of the most famous prophets is the prophet Elijah. And one of the things he's most famous for is this powerful event at Mount Carmel where he basically has this showdown with the prophets of Baal and fire comes down from heaven proving that God truly is the God of Israel. It's this huge event. You may have heard of it before, read that story before, and that's what people usually think of when they think of Elijah. They think of him as this powerful, victorious, you know, Mount Carmel kind of guy. A lot of times we don't look at what happened right after Mount Carmel in 1 Kings 19. You see, that happened in 1 Kings chapter 18, this great victory at Mount Carmel where God proved himself to be true. So amazing. Well, the next chapter, chapter 19, in the second verse, we find out that Jezebel, she has declared that she will kill Elijah. And Elijah's response is, kind of a little bit surprising to a lot of Bible readers. He goes into the wilderness under this broom tree and he cries out to God and he tells God that he wants his life to be done. He said, it is enough. Lord, take my life. And an angel appears, gives him some cake and some water. And on the strength of that cake and that water, he goes all the way on a 40-day journey to Mount Horeb, which is also known as Mount Sinai, okay? So you've heard of five-hour energy, right? Okay, which usually I get like 30 minutes of energy out of those. Those don't really work on me. Um, this is like a 40-day energy cake, okay? This is, this is crazy. So on the strength of that cake, he goes all the way to Mount Horeb. And he spends the night there in a cave. And then the Lord asks him a question. What are you doing here, Elijah? That is 1 Kings 19, verse 9. And he has a response. I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. He's quitting. He's like, I'm done with this. I'm, I'm the only one left, and I've been zealous for you. I've been doing this stuff, and I'm done. And it's not typical that you see a Bible character quit like that. It's really not typical. <laughs> but this is a very raw and authentic moment where... Elijah is fed up. He's done. And we can be in that place too. That's what this message is about. This message is about those moments in God's response because we're going to look at God's response to Elijah. He won't give up on you is the name of this sermon. 1 Kings 19 verses 11 to 15. Let's go ahead and pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask your blessing over this word. Lord, there are times where we are discouraged, even if we're not discouraged to the point where Elijah is in this passage. Lord, we pray that you would speak to us in this time, that you would use me to prove how you react to us when we face extreme discouragement. Because I believe this passage clearly shows that you won't give up on us. Lord, I pray that I would 
preach and teach your word with integrity. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's look at the text. We're picking up at that moment. Okay, God's asked him, what are you doing here? 1 Kings 19.9 and 19.10, he gives that answer. Here we go. Let's see what happens next. Verse 11, then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. This is verse 11. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, verse 12, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. Verse 13, So it was, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Verse 15, Then the Lord said to him, Go, Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. That's interesting. He's told to come out, and he sees these manifestations of God's presence and his voice. Now, this passage is famous because of the still small voice. And I think a lot of times it's just taught like, well, this is how the Lord speaks, and that's why this story is here. And yes, the Lord spoke in a still small voice this occasion to Elijah. It doesn't mean he always speaks in that way. In fact, these other manifestations, God has these throughout Scripture. Wind, earthquake, fire, and then a still small voice. Now notice the repetition. God asks the same exact question in verse 13 that he did in verse 9. What are you doing here? And that was after his presence is shown. His presence is shown in verses 11 and 12. And yes, his voice was in that still small voice. That's where his presence was. But he's showing the power of, of, of his presence here. The wind was so powerful. The earthquake, the fire, and that voice. All of these are miraculous. It's incredible. But in the face of this, not only does God repeat his question, but in verse 14, Elijah repeats his answer. I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek my life to take it. His answer doesn't change. God's presence here doesn't change his answer. What's God going to do? What's God's response when his children are fed up and just want to quit? This is an extreme discouragement. As I mentioned earlier in the chapter, He's like, I'm done with my life. He's like, he's begging God to just end this whole thing. He's like, I'm done doing this stuff. He's so alone. And he's blinded to the reality of the situation because he says he's the only one left. But the Lord affirms that he has many others. But all he can see is just all the struggle. And he feels so lonely and God has just given him one of the most amazing victories, an incredible victory of the Lord, proving God to be the true God of Israel. And he faces this amazing discouragement. What is God's response? Well, it's the gentle response of a father. Like any dad should do, he responds in gentleness. His still small voice. What are you doing here, Elijah? Almost as if, you know, Elijah's his child. And Elijah says the same thing. He's like, it's a, even God's presence in that moment doesn't change anything for Elijah. Which, 
I feel like would be really frustrating for God, right? Because it's like, you saw the wind, you saw the earthquake, you saw the fire, and then you heard my audible voice, and you're still going to hold on to this exact line that you're done. And his response in verse 15 just blows me away because God's patience is throughout this word. And we read through the entire Old Testament and again and again and again, you see God's character and his patience when you read through it. And he is so patient with Elijah here. Elijah has just seen and been a part of one of the most amazing miracles of the Bible. And he's done, right? He's like, I'm, I'm finished with this. And he sees all this great stuff, the wind, the earthquake, the fire. And he's like, eh, I'm, God, I'm done. Verse 15 answers the question, is God done with Elijah? He says, go, return on your way. Wow. God's not done with him. God's not done with him. He has, he, has, he has not given up on Elijah. He hasn't. He's not done with him. He gives him three assignments. The first is to install a king over Syria. The next is to set up a king in Israel. Both are actually pretty dangerous missions. Um, to set up Jehu as king over Israel. And then... God has given him the incredibly important and valuable job of raising up that next generation and raising up Elisha. And Elisha worked so many miracles and was on so many adventures with God. And God's like, no, you're not. I'm not giving up on you. I know you're discouraged right now. I'm not giving up on you. I'm still calling you to things. I'm still using you because I have gifted you and I still have purpose. You have such purpose. He won't give up on you. And that screams on these pages where God hears him repeat himself twice. God's like, you're going to install this king and this king. You're going to raise up the next generation. God continues to use Elijah. Elijah wanted to be done. And God's like, I'm not giving up on you. You might feel like giving up, but I'm not giving up on you. It's such an amazing truth in scripture. And I love that it's taking us behind the scenes. I wonder how many incredible moments in the scripture where we look back and we're like, oh, if only we could have that happen. We have no idea what's going on in the minds and hearts of people back then. And to see this extreme discouragement where he's despising even of his own life. And God's like, I'm not going to give up on you. I'm not going to. I still have special assignments. You're still on an adventure with me. Wow. How great is that? And that's not just him. You've been given special adventures to bless people, to be a blessing. God has gifted you. And there are times where we walk through in discouragement. It might not be as extreme as the discouragement that Elijah had. But we could walk through incredible discouragement where we're like, I don't even know if this is even working. I don't even know if I'm, oh, I don't even know if I want to keep going. I don't know if I would want this adventure anymore. And God's like, no, no, you, you still have so much purpose. There's so much more. You got to set up this king and this king, and you need to raise up the next generation. Elijah ends up duplicating himself, kind of literally. Elisha received a double portion. Oh, how sad it would have been if Elijah got what he asked for. God won't give up on him, and he won't give up on you. He won't give up on you. And even if in your discouragement you feel like, I know so many people have given up on me and I'm sure that God is so frustrated that I feel this way or I'm sure God, God's just had it with me. Don't say that. 
If he, if he wasn't at that point with Elijah in this passage, trust me, he's not through with you. He's not giving up on you. Take courage. Whatever the Lord has called you to do, even if you're walking in great discouragement, he continues to call you on adventures. You've been gifted by the Lord. This rare picture in Scripture, seeing just how fragile and vulnerable Elijah was before the Lord. And it's recorded in all Scripture to remind us that even when we want to quit, God won't quit on you. He hasn't given up on you. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you are a God who does not give up on us. Even if we've been around people who have given up on us in the past and we try to impose that on God as if you are like everyone else, you're not, and you don't give up on us, and you've gifted us and enabled us to participate with you in mission, to bless people, to bring joy, and each and every person who's watching this has the opportunity to walk in the adventures that you've set before them. And Lord, we pray that even when we get discouraged, because we will, when we get discouraged, that we would remember that you do not give up on us. And if, if Elijah himself can get discouraged, we can too. So I pray if we don't need this in this moment, that you would keep it well guarded in our hearts and keep it safe so that in the day we need it, it would be ready to come to our mind and heart that we would be encouraged that you don't give up on us. We love you. We thank you for your word today. We thank you for the example of Elijah. And we thank you that you came to Elijah with a still small voice, gentleness. You weren't mad at him. You're ready to get him back on the adventure because you weren't giving up on him. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's such a joy that you joined us today to listen to this. If you'd like, you can comment below and um, share prayer requests, share anything, share um, any comment that you would like. You can also email us at contact at leptochurch.com. I hope that you have a blessed day. Thank you again. It was so wonderful to have you here. And I hope that this was an encouragement to you. And we hope to see you next time. Thanks. Thanks.